Broadway's biggest stars and shows are right here on The Broadway Show. I'm Tamson Fidel. Let's get going. Forever I will move like the world that turns beneath me And when I lose my direction, I'll look up to the sky Prepare to be swept away, the new shipwreck musical inspired by the songs of the Avett brothers taking Broadway by storm. And remember, we're all in this together. We've been following this musical's journey for a while now, from California to Washington, D.C., and now Broadway. Check it out. What is Swept Away, for people who don't know the story? Swept Away is a new musical with a book by John Logan and songs by the Avid Brothers. They're a roots rock band from North Carolina. Uh, it's directed by my friend Michael Mayer, who did Spring Awakening and American Idiot with me. It's a show about four sailors in the late 1800s who find themselves uh, lost at sea on a lifeboat after their whaling vessel sinks in a storm. What drew you to this material? Was it, was it the material and Michael? Was it working with Michael again? Yeah, it was kind of a combination of all the factors. I got involved very early, which is something that I haven't quite done before. Mm -hmm. um, I said yes before there was a script. I just heard that Michael was thinking about directing it. John Logan was maybe going to take a pass at the script and they were going to use songs by the Avid Brothers. And I'm such devout fans of all three of them that I just thought, well, if they're involved, I want to get involved. I don't even really know what it's going to be. I hadn't done a new musical in like right. almost a decade at the time. And so it just thought like, this is a no brainer to me to get involved with people that I admire uh, in a show that sounds like it's going to be a big adventure. Cause I want to send you in more. I want to tempt you in more. Can you tell that I am alive? David Brothers, let's talk a little bit about the music and how it just uh, feeds itself and, you know, and describes this story and makes this big adventure happen. Yeah, I think Scott and Seth Avid, uh, who are the Avid Brothers, um, are, I just think they're two of the most gifted songwriters that, that we have. Um, I've been a big fan of theirs since I was like about 20 years old. I had just moved to New York a few years prior. I was just getting my start working in theater in New York and I discovered them. I saw them at a small folk festival outside of Philadelphia that my parents took me to. That They've been taking me to the Philadelphia Folk Festival since I was a kid. My parents are big folk music aficionados. The Avid Brothers just happened to be booked. I had never heard of them. I was walking through the festival grounds and I heard them start playing. And I thought, well, that sounds really unique. I've never heard anything quite like what these guys are doing. I couldn't even see them. They were far away. And so I walked over to the stage and I watched their whole set. And I bought their CD and oh, bought wow. their T-shirt. Um, I was sort of a um, wannabe publicist for them. I was always telling people to check out their band. Wow. Uh, I never thought that you know, in some 14, 15 years time, I'd be working on a project with them. They're truth tellers. Their, their music is unbelievably raw and honest and to the point and vulnerable and it really kind of runs the spectrum of an emotional landscape. I mean, every single kind of moment in the human experience is in one of their songs, it seems. And so even though they don't know much about the musical theater world, their music, what surprised me was it really lends itself to the art form, even though stylistically you might not think it to listen to their music or to see their concert. Sure. But there is a theatricality to it because they deal in really high stakes of uh, faith or lack thereof, love and loss. Um, it feels really, really potent, the music that they write. I really love that. That's a really special story. Yeah. That's really special to see where you are today. Who could, you know, it's you, wild. you talk about, full, I mean, that's full circle. It <laughs> really like, is. I mean, I find myself different. pinching yeah. myself. Like, I, I, you know, been lucky enough to meet them a few times now, and they come to see the show or stop into a rehearsal, and I get starstruck. I mean, we are so spoiled. We got to announce the Broadway. Uh, bow of this show at one of their concerts at the Forest Hills back in May, which is, you know, a legendary venue. Uh, we actually went out on stage and sang with them, and I, I barely remember it because it was just sort of emotionally um, overwhelming to walk out onto to their stage with them. Want to see more of my interview? Head over to Broadway.com for an extended cut. We're celebrating another huge opening night on Broadway. We're talking about Left on 10th. The new play by Delia Efron is a romantic comedy about second chances in life and in love. The stars were out for opening night. You know, the Efron girls always understood how to make New York look romantic. You know, any of their movies you see, you want to move to New York. 
I think we've created a very romantic, beautiful New York setting because it is. It's very dreamy, even though it's all real. Well, I live on 10th Street. I mean, that's left on 10th is my way home, and I love where I live so much. It makes me happy every time I walk on the street. I love that I see every kind of person that there is to see, every age of person, every dog that exists on this planet is walking on 10th Street. So I, I mean, I feel, I think New Yorkers are born all over the country, and then they come to New York and they say, oh, this is who I am. I've begun to believe that every little piece of luck in life is a small miracle. It's like if you go on the subway platform and the subway comes right away, okay, that's a miracle, right? But then there are miracles like this. Then there are miracles so big that you don't even know how to catalog them. And that's what this has been for me. Peter Francis James said something really interesting. He said, guys, because we go out and sign and talk to the audience afterwards. He said, guys, this, is, this show is kind of like big medicine for a lot of people. We find that there are a lot of people who have it's had the same experience that Delia's had, or had more unfortunate outcomes with people they loved. And they find strength in their experience being recognized and delight in it being told well. That, you know, the, and even the doctors that come and see it say, oh yeah, I had no cringe moments at all. That's just what it's like. I think it's a really special story. And I just know from the 30 previews we've done, and from meeting people afterwards who have seen the play, how effective it is. It's really moving people, and people, I think, come out of it knowing that they've been seen and heard, because it touches everyone in some way in their own life. She's ready for her close-up at Sunset Boulevard like you've never seen it before. It's a radically reimagined version of the epic musical starring Nicole Scherzinger. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Nicole, Broadway, it's happened. You're here, childhood dream realized. Yes, it, this is my childhood dream. It's, it's crazy, a lot of people don't realize that I grew up loving the theater and yep. musical theater. And um, I always dreamed of coming to Broadway. It was just gonna be the right time and, and the right show. Mm -hmm. So here we are, Sunset Boulevard. You are a s overnight Broadway star. I mean, it's it must just I can't imagine how it feels. It's an I'm an overnight Broadway star. God bless you for saying that. That's taken many, 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 many years to get here. <laughs> so Jamie Lloyd came to you obviously with this idea of this show. Was the vision all sort of explained from the very beginning? Did what, what, what? I'm curious about what it was like actually discovering it in the rehearsal room. Jamie came to me about this show over a few years ago, and. He came to me with this big idea. Obviously, I heard the idea and I was like, this is your big idea, right? Like to play to to play this like deranged, faded film star. You know, I always say, honey, I'm a pussycat doll. I'm still look good under bright lights, you know? <laughs> um, but he just was like, please just read the story. And when I read the script, he sent me the script that night. When I read the script, it wasn't as at all at what I'd remembered mm. only in the film. And when I read it, I really connected with Norma. I really empathized with her. And I really understood her on so many levels. And then I listened to the music. I couldn't believe it. I'm a musical theater fan and I didn't know the music to wow. Sunset Boulevard. That's when I fell madly in love with her. You know, these songs, these lyrics, I feel like they were written for me. I'm back where I was born to be. I've come home at last. You know, we'll give the world new ways to dream. So um, I I was like, okay, I, I think I get this. I really do. Like, I, I couldn't believe what I was absorbing in this mm -hmm. material. Maybe, maybe this was my answered prayers to be able to, a lot of people just knew me for the dolls and they didn't, I, you know, this I would be able to kind of share, you know, open up and see so many different sides of me people didn't know. Yeah, and I remember when you were first cast, everyone thought, oh, she's too young and beautiful to play Norma Desmond. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, she's the exact right age. And the whole point is that Norma is a vibrant, beautiful woman. It actually makes it more heartbreaking when you see how much potential there is to celebrate Norma. That's the tragedy. Yeah. Is... When we were playing with Salome, I thought, 
okay, like what silly stuff are you gonna want me to do? I'm obviously gonna bring my sense of humor to this, Jamie. Um, you know, what kind of old school kind of dancing do you want me to do? He's like, oh, there's no old school dancing. I want, you're gonna do like stuff you did in the Pussy Cat Dolls. And I was like, but that's cool. Right. And he's like, yeah, you're gonna do you. And I was like, but that's not like, you know, Salome, like old school. Mm. And he's like, no, that's the tragedy is you are so vibrant, you are so full of life, you're, you know, more fit, more brave, more everything than ever, and then the industry still, you know, just looks at your age and, yeah. and dismisses you. What is it like to just have one costume? I mean, the yeah. original production was so lavish, mm -hmm. so to be able to just focus on yeah. the story and the music and the words. Well, needless to say, I was hardly thrilled when I found out I wasn't gonna have any costumes. <laughs> Cause I was like, listen, I want leopard print everywhere. I want a leopard print turban, a leopard print caftan. How many different leopard print versions can we have of this? And they were like, no, you're wearing a black slip. And I was like, can we throw in a white slip? Can we throw in a red slip? Like how many slips are we talking? And he was like, one. And I was like, what? And then I was like, well, what cute shoes am I stepping into? And he was like, you're barefoot. And I was like, you're just taking me out of all my comfort zones, you know? Um, but like you said, it's great because it's so minimal. It's so bare and stripped back and um, you get to the real meat mm. and the heart of the stories of these people. And um yeah, and, and when you really connect and you um, get rid of all the noise, yeah. then that's when people, uh, the story really comes to life. Mm -hmm. The imagination like reading a book. The Bard is back on Broadway because the story of star-crossed lovers never gets old. Rachel Zegler and Kit Connor starring in the new Broadway revival of William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. We hit the red carpet with the stars on opening night. It's really exciting. That was one of our kind of main goals, was, was to bring in a new audience. I've loved Shakespeare for a very long time, and I've loved the theater for a long time, and to be able to introduce some people to it who, who weren't as uh, familiar or in love with it as, as I was, then, you know, it's a very exciting thing. Sam Gold is my favorite theater director of all time. Shakespeare is yeah. hard and he makes it feel like it's really not as difficult as you think. When you just let really brilliant people show up, then you have all this amazing raw material to, to work with. And I just knew if Jack delivered a song, I, I would know what to do with it. And then he delivered a, the first song and I was like, I know exactly what to do with this. This is how we end act one. We go to the intermission on this. It's Rachel. And it just all kind of happens. It comes together. This is The Broadway Show, and we're back in just a few. Thanks for sticking around. I'm Tamsin Fidel. The Majestic Theater welcoming a new show for the first time in 35 years. Gypsy begins previews in November. Audra, this is happening. I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. I'm so everything. <laughs> excited and scared. <laughs> What is the vision here? I mean, and you've been talking to him for a while. I've been hearing whispers of it for a few years and getting really excited about the idea of you two doing this together. What What is uh, the take? What are we going to see at the Majestic Theater? We've seen a lot of gypsies. You're going to see, you know, this iconic story of a, a mother who has ambitions and dreams and, and a desire to, you know, um, have her daughters have more than what she had to stop generational trauma, to make sure that her daughters um, aren't, you know, subjugated to, you know, an unfulfilled life. Certain lines may hit different. Hearing a black woman say, I was born too soon and got started too late. I mean, that, that, you feel that for women as well, but maybe it'll hit different coming from a black woman. I mean, I, I just think it's that. It's just going to maybe perhaps resonate in a different way. And again, I don't, in 2024, as a 54 year old woman, I don't look at Rose as a monster at all. She's not. I don't think she is. You're moving, 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 moving way too slow. I think I got that antidote. Let's hear it for New York. Broadway's Hell's Kitchen celebrating the Arthur Miller Foundation. After a recent performance, the company celebrated the foundation's 10th anniversary. The Arthur Miller Foundation honors, celebrates the power of public school arts education, and honors those who have made serious contributions to arts and culture. 
All of this year's honorees are members of the Hell's Kitchen family. The honorees this year are, are extra special because the story of Hell's Kitchen is the story of the Arthur Miller Foundation. It's all about a teacher seeing potential in someone who doesn't yet see potential in themselves and then helping them realize that passion. And that's what we hope we are able to do for our teachers and our students. So take Miss Liza Jane and multiply it by 127 teachers and that gets you hundreds of thousands of students that are being impacted on a daily basis. It's my passion for the arts. It's the love for the arts. It's what I do. It's why I breathe. Music is my purpose. Well, I remember when the dream started and it's come full circle. And I'm very grateful. I'm very proud. I'm, I'm extremely happy to be in the show. It's an amazing experience. It's life altering, life changing. It's to the next level. Students were just so moving today, singing Kaleidoscope, and like they did so well, but also, you know, it wasn't only that there were some extraordinary voices up there, which there were in performers, but it was just that sense of all the kids feeling like they had permission to own the stage, take up space, be themselves, have confidence. And that's what we want for all children, that, you know, theater is a gateway to literacy, confidence, empathy, it's not only about becoming an artist, it's about becoming a better citizen and a better, you know, an appreciator of theater. A theater is a wonderful threshold to many, many things that are very important for us right now. I mean, I'm so lucky to do what I do because I found theater in high school. I found theater 16, 17, 8 years old, in, uh, 16, 17, 18 years old in Yonkers, New York, and I stumbled into it, and I have never had to work a job that wasn't in some way connected to the theater since I graduated college. So I've been blessed, and the reason that I've been blessed that way is tied directly back to learning about this art form when I was so young. So to be able to be part not only of a show that is connected to that, but for a foundation and organization like that right now is just like, I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Now here's another exclusive musical performance from the Broadway.com studio. Hi, my name is Mary-Kate Morrissey. I play Elphaba in Wicked on Broadway, and this is The Wizard and I. Did that really just happen? Have I actually understood this weird quirk I've tried to suppress? or hide is a talent that could help me meet the wizard if I make good so I'll make good when I meet the wizard once I prove my worth and then I meet the wizard, what I've waited for since, since birth. And with all his wizard wisdom, by my looks, he won't be blinded. Do you think the wizard is dumb or like Munchkin, so small-minded? No, he'll say to me, I see who you truly are, a girl on whom I can rely, and that's how and I Once I'm with a wizard My whole life will change Cause once you're with a wizard No one thinks you're strange No father is not proud of you No sister acts ashamed And all of us has to you, when by the wizard you're acclaimed And this gift or this curse I have inside Maybe at last I'll know why As we work hand in hand The wizard and I And one day he'll say to me Alphaba, a girl who is so superior Shouldn't a girl who's so good inside Have a matching exterior since folks here to an absurd degree Same fix it in on your verdict Would it be all right by you 
If I decreenify you and though of course that's not and that's going to do it for us, but for tickets, or if you want to check out extended cuts of all these interviews, head over to Broadway.com. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.